when I started this expose on Yahushua and the prevalent use of people being caught up into this heresy, it wasn't with the idea that people were going to be condemned, but rather it was to contend for the faith. It was to remind you, whoever you are, that any one of us can be caught up in deception and false teaching, that we can be caught up by our own desires for something to be true, more than asking God what the truth is. You see, if you don't have a personal relationship with God, you're going to create something else in the place of that personal relationship. You're going to try to fill that gap inside that just won't be satisfied. And I know if you're in the Yehushua's cult or you're into that kind of teaching, you're not satisfied. You're not content with where you're at. You feel like you have to fight for the faith. You feel like you have to tell people about the wrong spelling. And you feel like you have to do more and more and more and more in order to feel right. That should tell you something. That should warn you that the hardest part now is in your hands. The hardest part about being in this, whether it be the offshoot of Hebraic roots or some Jewish sounding sect that isn't really accurate, or whether you think you're Pentecostal so much that you've got some new way of saying some sacred name, it's not about really how to say the name, but about whether you know God personally. You see, Moses spoke to God. That should be the first indicator. And God spoke to Moses. Abraham spoke to God. And God spoke to Abraham. David spoke to God. And God spoke to David. We have recorded all throughout the Tanakh, if you want to put it in Jewish terms, in the brand, in the brand, in the New Testament, in the Brit Hadasha, in all of Judaism, if you don't even understand this fact, the reality of God speaking to a person has always been inherent in the knowledge of the Jew that God can speak to a person. God chooses to, and that was what made a Jew a Jew. No Jew would tell someone who heard from God not to do what God said. They would stand back and watch and wait and see. So for you to find the truth of being in where you're at, you're going to have to talk to God because none of these facts that have been presented to you are going to convince you completely. You're going to have to ask God individually. You're going to have to speak to Him personally. You're going to have to walk and talk with Him as a human being to a divinity. And I would ask him to help you to understand where it is you're wrong. Because it's not always everything that you're doing is so wrong that nothing is right. But you just happen to have made up ideas that somebody deceived you with and you don't know where to draw the line at. You have an improper knowledge of who God is. And until you straighten that out, you're always going to have this conflict going on that you don't really know who your father is. You don't know God personally. You're not dealing with him individually, are you? So I would say get with Jesus. If you don't want to call him Jesus, call him whatever you want to call him. But you need to have a direct answer so that you can stand before God and answer for what your actions, your attitude, and your intentions are. Because we have proven and demonstrated beyond any shadow of a doubt in the Word of God throughout all of history, there is no such a thing as Yahushua. There's no Yahoos, there's no Yahoohoos, there's no Yahuwas, there's no Yahwowas. There's nothing like that. I'm sorry. If there could be, if there was a possibility, I'd say, hang on to it. But there's not. So now the hardest part and the hardest thing for you to do is really in your hands. And the hardest thing to do is to admit you're wrong. But you can to him. Not to us or not to anyone. You don't have to go out and change your name or confess your sin or admit some fault. 
but you just have to kind of begin to just put aside the childish things, the the goofy paleo paleo Hebraicisms that you thought were true that aren't. They were made up. You need to set aside some of this ideas that you have of etymology and where you think these words came from when they didn't come from God himself. The fact is and the matter is you have to deal with God alone and one-on-one -on -one you're going to meet him face-to-face -face one day for judgment. So while it is still today, you can find in yourself a quiet place. You can take a moment in time to ask him to reveal to you the truth to just speak to Jesus or speak to God your Father one-on-one -on -one and just say, hey, I don't get it. I don't understand. Am I wrong? And let Him lead you and guide you. And then if you are confused and you really want to talk, really want to just not be condemned, but just you want to somehow explain it better than what you've read. All these, all these 50 plus pieces of material that have definitely shown you the truth, but if you still have questions or you still need answers, you can get a hold of me. You can email me. You can talk to me. I know. I was in the Messianic movement. I'm not against anything Messianic. I'm just telling you, you've gone too far. I can tell you where the parameters are, where the boundaries are, where you shouldn't go beyond, where law and grace are true and they do apply both equally, and that you can find peace. You can enjoy your Shabbat service. You can enjoy your Jewish Hebraisms, but not in the way that you're doing it. Not in the demonstrative of the error that you're making the Word of God out to be, but in the reality of what the Word of God is. Because you see, you can't change the truth in order to fit your theology or your practices. You have to change yourself in order to fit God's Word. And when you do that, then you can hang on to your if you choose to, your Shabbat or your practices or your desires to make yourself into some kind of persona that you see or you perceive or you think that God has told you to do. And then I'd say, God bless you, be at peace, go. But don't isolate yourself away from the body of Christ. Rather, inspire the body of Christ to enjoy that Jewish heritage that we all have in common. For we all have a common ancestor, Adam. And as such, we are all common one to another. So find in this video, if you will, the place, the desire, the heart that I have to just have you examine the truth and then please go before God and admit the fact you were wrong. And then just ask Him what to do next, where to go, how to be. You don't have to necessarily get too crazy about it. Just talk to Him about it. And then let him guide you. Let him lead you. Let the yud he vav he the ineffable name, the God Almighty, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the Father of us all, let him lead you and guide you. For surely as Jesus is the Son of God, and I say unto you that there is no such a thing as a Yahushuas. There is no Yahuhus. There's no Yahweh, Yahweh's. There's no Yahwist. There's none of that stuff. It's made up. But as surely as Jesus is the Son of God, as Yeshua is the name of the Son of God, as Yehoshua is his Hebrew name and temple, he is Jesus and he will save us from our sins. And you can know the fact of the truth. And you can be set free from the bondage of sin and separation that you've made for yourself away from these people you think are going to stain you in some way, you can be found free to go to God direct one-on-one -on -one and ask Him to lead you in the way, the truth, and the life that He has for you.